All right, so today we are going to be diving into how to get quality time with your family as a first responder. Now, this is different than what I normally do. Um, normally, I'm usually in the, the science of your entire stress system and um, really how to delve into that from a physical point of view. But um, I actually put a lesson into the program that helps with quality time because it was a huge one for my husband and my husband who does not, um, he's very quiet on his thoughts <laughs> is one way to say it. And he expressed to me that this one was so important and he was really, um, he thought that it'd be really beneficial for a lot of you guys as well. So this works for those of you that are, um, we have all different family dynamics. We have um, spouses who are still together. We have you living in separate um, units. Um, I've heard recently as well where um, spouses are just living in two separate times. And when you have your time with your kids, that's your time. The spouse has to actually stay away. <clears throat> Sorry, when you're separated. <clears throat> so there's all different um, family dynamics. And the thing is, is that um, it's really hard to know quite often, um, what you should be doing with your kids and how to be spending that time with your kids and, um, morning, Loni. Okay. So you can hear me. I just had some tech issues earlier, so I'm just wanted to make sure I wasn't talking to anybody. So thanks for letting me know that you can hear me. So with this, what my husband was struggling with is he would come home from shift absolutely exhausted, thoroughly exhausted. And there would be some chaos in the house with the kids. And we, he, he really just needed some space. He really did. He was exhausted. He dealt with so much stuff, um, 12 hour shifts, going into overtime, all that crazy stuff. And if he would come home and we were all there, um, he just needed a little bit of time for himself. And the thing is, is we read this book called The Five Love Languages, and it has been a game changer for us. And what this book states, it's by Gary Chapman. Um, they have a military edition as well. So for any of you that are that deploy a lot, that are away, so I know many of the fire guys in... Um, that are dealing in um, forestry, you guys could be gone for a month or two at a time sometimes. So um, the military edition is really good for that as well, having to understand how to be coming back for deployment. These were originally created for spouses, but um, they now have it actually for kids as well. It's, it's been unbelievable for us. So what they say, what Gary Chapman says is that there are five different love languages. And we are all different. We all have different combinations. So your spouse may have one, your kids may have another. Um, so for us in our family, my husband is words of affirmation. If I um, praise him, if I like, if, if there, we're doing things around the house and he's starting to get um, feeling like I'm on him and he's getting that agitated feeling of feeling like I'm always putting him down and stuff. Because in my mind, I'm asking him for help and saying like, hey, could you do the dishes or um, laundry's next or whatever we're working on and doing different things. But if I don't praise him for it and be like, hey, you know, thanks so much for folding that laundry or um, thanks for grabbing the kids just now or thanks for working, doing different things like that or going and watching watching the kids when they're all playing hockey with their dad and cheering their dad on too. He needs that. He's that words of affirmation. That's so not me that I'm not good with that one. So that's been a learned skill on my end. My other two kids, one is quality time and one is touch, um, physical touch. So my physical touch kid, we used to call him our magnet. He would be, if he's sitting at the table, he needs a foot on us. Absolutely needs a foot on us at all times. And that foot all of a sudden he would end up in my lap at the dinner table. And it used to bother us and upset us until we started reading this. And we're like, his love language is touch completely. 
so he needs those high fives. He needs touch. He needs, um, at, he's seven right now. He needs hugs, cuddles, kisses, all of that. He's good. My other one is quality time. And so he needs us to actually sit there and pay attention. He needs us to put our phone away for five minutes. It really doesn't take a long time to what Gary Chapman says to fill their love bucket. If you do this on a daily basis. So my husband knows when he comes home, the kids are trained that they come home. They're like, daddy, thank you for working. Makes him feel good. Makes him feel that love. And then he knows that he needs to stop and talk to our one child while the other one is all over him. It used to bother him while he was playing a game with our one child. And the other one would be not wanting to play with them. But he, after he started realizing his love language isn't the quality time, it's the touch. He just wants to be around me touching him. So as they're playing Pokemon or as they're doing Beyblade battles or as they're just sitting and talking about their day together um, very quickly, like he might come home to my son and say, hey, do you want to hear what happened today? And he'll just tell him some funny story of something that happened during the day. And he spent that one-on-one -on -one time. It was a story for them to be together five minutes totally five minutes. The other one is jumping on him, running all over him and he'll pick him up. Sometimes he'll toss him on a couch. He does that for a couple of minutes with him. He's fine. The kids go off and do their own thing. Um, but this is something that we have done day after day after day with our kids. So they know it, they know it, they work with it. Um, and, uh, and they, we know how to fill their love buckets and it's made such a world of difference that I thought this was really important to pass on to you because what our love language is. So the other two are acts of kindness and gifts. Now, when we're saying gifts, it's not expensive things. It could be, Hey, I drew you a picture today. Like you could just be at work and make a paper airplane and bring the paper airplane home to your kid. That is a gift. Um, it could be picking a flower for them on your way home, like something really small. It doesn't have to be things that you bought. It can be small things. It can be just one little treat of something or this or that. Like, so when it comes to gifts, it doesn't have to be big extravagant gifts. It's just really small little gifts and acts of kindness, acts of service. That's when somebody finds that um, they may spend the whole day cooking and cleaning and organizing and doing all these things because that's their love language. And, um, and, and that's how they do things. So somebody it's that, so you doing it for them back is where they feel the love. So the way that you can understand their love sometimes is where they're complaining. So, um, for physical, if they start being like a little more rough housing with you, with the kids, that could be that their love language is physical. Um, for acts of kindness, if they're saying to you, you never help around the house, you're not doing anything, acts of kindness may be theirs, where they're actually, all you do is honestly vacuum, clean the toilet every once in a while, or make a meal, and they will be the happiest spouse in the world. Um, so it really is important to understand. So this, this book, The Five Love Languages, is um, on Audible's. Um, they have a child one. I'm going to be honest with you. I actually preferred the spouse one to go through and adapted it for my kids. I found the child one, the first half kind of dragged on the second half though, had a lot of good tactical things. So when you're disciplining your kids, how to discipline them without totally taking the love out of their tank. So, um, physical touch is as I'm having a talk with my child, I will sometimes hug them first. Um, if he's even open to being hugged, sometimes he's not because he's mad at me. So he, that's how he'll stop his love and show his anger. Um, sometimes it's just sitting beside him and just touching him with my knee or my shoulder as we're having a conversation about whatever we're disciplining him about. Could have my hand on his back. Um, at the end, ending it with a hug. So you're still having these words. You're still talking to, to them. You're still disciplining them but you're still showing them that you still love them. Um, same thing with um, if they are quality time and you are going to banish them 
from everything forever, um, from any time and attention with you, they, that's where they feel like, oh, you don't love me. So disciplining that child is different. So when you're disciplining a child that is quality time, it's not taking a quality time thing away from them. Um, it's still making sure that you're doing things sometimes for him with that one child, it's helping them clean up whatever broke. Um, and, and then we will, so I've spent the time, I've shown them that I love them and then we'll sit and talk about the consequence. Um, if there's money coming out of their allowance, if there's, <clears throat> if they need to replace it, if they need to apologize to somebody, whatever the consequence is going to be, what they need to stop, how we need to go over the new rules and regulations. But they still need to know that I have that quality time with them. So I'm actually doing something with them first. So it really is understanding. You may have five different kids and they will have five different love languages and how you need to treat them, how you discipline them. Each is very, very different. So the five love languages books for kids, the second half where they go into all the tactical points of how to actually execute it, um, is where was very valuable for me, but I skipped, I started reading the first half and just kept getting lost in it because I'd already read the adult one. Um, the adult one I found was shorter, <laughs> quicker to the point. Um, and I was able to actually relate that to how it is in kids. So really um, going into those things is, it, it's honestly been invaluable. There's the guys in our group, they find that it takes the energy away of having to guess what your child needs when you walk in the door. If you know what your child needs when you walk in the door and you can give it to them, then um, they will go off with their tanks full and then you can get that time for yourself. Also knowing your love language, then you know what to ask for and how you need. You'll find this with guys, like there's certain guys at work that are probably always like, you know, pat me on the back, um, high fives, fist pumps, all of those things. Those are physical touch guys. So that's what they need. Um, you'll have guys that are always going out of their way to do things for others. Um, they may be the acts of service. So you can work this with your colleagues at work as well. It's not necessarily just in your family, but it works for everybody. Um, that we have found and it's been fascinating like even just with our neighbors knowing one of them um she, she goes over the moon it's hilarious when we bring the garbage bins in and out um for them and it's it, it's just she just loves it but it's you're doing an act of service for her and that's her love language and she just thinks it's the most amazing thing whereas husband's just like oh yeah thanks because that's not his love language so once you understand these things about your neighbors, your friends, your family, your colleagues, um, it can really help you get um, a little bit more of a bond with them, especially with somebody where there's tension happening. Um, and if you have your kids only part of the time, um, really knowing how to make that time really good quality time makes such a difference. So I want to just make clear, though, that knowing this is one thing, implementing it is another. And if you are so exhausted, if you have no motivation and drive, if you are isolating yourself, if you feel like you just don't want to engage with anybody and participate in anything with them, um, then this may be a tool to put on the back burner. I want you to know that there's nothing wrong with you. That is what pretty much every single person that comes into my nine only performance program comes in with is that low motivation and drive that exhaustion. That was me. I used to sit on the couch. <coughs> Sorry. My I'm athletic. My husband and I met playing beach volleyball we used to carry a ball everywhere we went that stopped. We stopped carrying balls with us. We stopped um, being active. And all I wanted to do was put my kids in front of the TV and sit on the couch and do nothing. And at that point in time, there was no way that I could implement what I just taught you. There was no way. So if you're at that point, know that you now have some tools that you can use when you get out 
of where you're at now and know that we can get you out. Um, lots of my other videos and stuff go into detail into that. So I don't need to go into that now. The point of this today was to really make sure that you understood um, the five love languages and getting that quality time with your family. But do know that you're not broken. The problem is that your stress system was designed for somebody who doesn't work shift work, who doesn't push it um, day in, day out the way that you do. So we just need to go in, lift the hood of your engine, and we need to go and um, pretty much upgrade everything, repair and upgrade it so that your stress system can handle what you're throwing at it as a first responder. There's no way with civilians, they always say, take stresses off your plate, but there's no way you can't take 12, 24 hour shifts off your plate. You can't take rushing to hot calls. You can't take rushing to any call and not knowing what it's going to be. Um, all of the admin stress, all of the stressors with, with the public and everything right now, all of the family stressors we have, there are so many of those things that cannot be taken off your plate. They just can't. So we need to go in and really take a deep dive into your stress system and soup it up. Um, we need to get it running so that you are more like a Formula One race car where you can actually push that engine over and over and over again. And then you know how um, when the race is over, when your shift is over, how you can go and maintain and repair and upgrade, upkeep that stress system so that you can continue to go. All right. So just understand that it's not anything wrong with you. It is that your stress system was built for just regular civilian life and we need to upgrade it. That's all. Um, and we can do that. So if your motivation and drive is low, if you are exhausted, if what I just taught you is not, um, if you can't even implement that right now, not even read the books or the audio books or take it in, your memory can't take it in. Just know that we can get your stress system back so that all of those things can go back into place. Um, email us support at 911lifestyle.com or um, comment below here and we will reach out to you. You can private message us. Um, we are here to help and support you. We've created a program where you are anonymous. You can remain um, remain anonymous throughout the program. Use an alias name so nobody in your service will ever know. Um, you can be at any rank um, in your service. Nobody will at all know that you are working on upgrading your stress system until you want to tell them. All right. Take care. Have a great day. And if you have any questions on the five love languages or any questions on your stress system, just let us know.